Hey, Nerd Herd, Dynasty Nerds, and we're back wrapping up our rookie breakdowns of the 2024 rookie quarterback class. And boy, do we have some good ones in here. Yeah, we'll see what Rich has in the box. <laughs> Ready, set, hut, hut. Welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast, where we discuss dynasty strategy, rankings, and all things NFL. So get ready to geek out on fantasy football with your host, Rich Dotson. And welcome to the Dynasty Nerds Fantasy Football Podcast. I'm Richard Dotson. He's Matthew O'Hara. Hey, hey. He's Gareth Price. How's it going? He's Gareth Wackerly. Hi. (laughs) You held that one. You held that. That was a pretty good one. Like a little longer than normal. Which one? The and. The oh, and. did I? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I don't know. It's never pre. It's gone, it's just gone longer. I just no. know it's got to be longer than two seconds. Yeah. And you know, you know how that all and. came? It, like from the first and. show, I was like, when we did our first intro, uh, I was like, man, I just wanted to like, I want to do something with the intro where it's the same all the time. And I have no idea I'd be doing this for 10 years, like for the next <laughs> five months. Uh, and I was like, oh, I'll just do the long I, did the, I felt like the end was a little bit longer. I was like, oh, I'll just accentuate that. Here yeah. we are 10 years and later. here we are. And, yeah. and probably here we wouldn't are. have been like, a successful you, show had we not at, done that. You've gone the, over a minute, right? It's are we, be, no. Yes. <laughs> yes. No, you have not. Yes. No, you have not. We didn't think you could make it 30 up. seconds. You made it like 39 seconds or something like that. I beat, I beat it. But 18 inches. Suck it. <laughs> what? I did it. it. You beat it 18 inches? <laughs> Suck Anytime, it. like He's when I go, about the jump thing. Every time I go, All right, back, like, let's hear it, a minute right now. No, no, come on. I no. really no. don't. No, no. Right no. no, right no. now. No, I don't want to hear it. Proof is in the pudding. When I do go to like the expo and stuff, when people like, like I mean, for the first time, they're like, and Rich Dotson. I'm like, oh, thanks, man. That's pretty annoying. <laughs> That's mean. <laughs> <laughs> that what I sound like? Totally yeah, nice. imagine being in their ears. I don't know. I don't listen to the show back, but I'm sure it's pretty bad. I mean, nobody told me to stop doing it yet. It's been 10 years. You shouldn't. You should keep going. What if you like, you know, when they just like LeBron scored his 40,000 points and they showed every shot, like every dot, like what if somebody went through every show we did and they connected all the hands together and it was just one long. Oh I wonder how gosh. long that would be. It's got to be like, I know, an 10 hour? hours, I'd say an average of 10 seconds, minimum, minimum, let's call an average 60 shows a you year. You think it's an average of 10 seconds? seconds. No, it's Maybe like five. two. And well, six. Dude, that was the quickest <laughs> six seconds I've ever seen. Yeah. 36. <laughs> Oh, shit. Carry the one. Four up. Well, I mean, yeah. 10 years. Sure. Okay. Five seconds on average, because that one time I went a minute, so that just breaks up the whole average. It was like 39 seconds. Pulls it up. All right. This and is two seconds today, and it felt a little long. I'm looking at it on the time thing. Oh, so it's not that. Oh, you ruined it. <laughs> <laughs> I ruined anyway, it. prospects. <laughs> so we're talking rookie quarterbacks. This you is our final. Us on track. <laughs> Look at you. This is our final rookie breakdown show of quarterbacks. <laughs> Look at guys. We did it. We made it through it. We made it through it. We're done. All done. Well, when we first started, no, show, we, we can never not do running backs. I love doing running backs; they're my favorite. Oh yeah, I'm talking about quarterbacks. I know, but you just never done. That's it. God, you're really bringing the show down today. I've been the only cheerful voice on this. show. All right, today. quarterbacks. Whoa, whoa! Everyone, when else you get here, a big bummer. Listen, uh, man, you'd be angry too if somebody peed in Cheerios <laughs> like me. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, Cheerios? someone kicked your dog this morning. <laughs> I was confident when you first walked in. <laughs> oh, right, you Matt. did flash us when you first got in. I so. sure did. Oh, I missed that. Yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, we were doing the nerd herd episode. Damn it! Nib- I put my, nibbles I put my, blazing. I put my nibble right against the glass up there. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, why is Garrett oh, yeah. drooling? Well, it doesn't make sense. I'm like, oh, oh, that makes very more sense. Nibbles. God. I thought you guys were uh, in need of a little pussy up. So you'll never see me complain about seeing nipples. So. <laughs> always an o- doors always open. Seven Eleven around here. Always. Did you see uh, Saturday Night Live the other day. I don't ever watch Saturday Night Live now. Oh. I didn't. Well. I used to when it was good. You like nipples, so I didn't know. <laughs> oh yeah. Well. Was there a nip slip? <laughs> no. Okay. Just uh, all right. Look, now Google Garrett's it. drooling again. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I was gonna say. I mean, I'm I'm sure I have it on my DVD. Yeah, Sydney Sweeney on, and everyone's talking about how uh, their boobs were hanging out the whole time. Oh. And then right. they had Shane Gillis. They're like, oh, they're they're unwoke now. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Some people like that kind of stuff. Attention, Dynasty nerds. Want to play Dynasty like a pro? Check out FFPC, where serious Dynasty leagues have thrived since 2010. You can dive into a world of over 1,500 leagues with stakes ranging from $100 all the way up to an elite $5,000 league. FFPC isn't just a game. It's a community. 
With unique formats like TriFlex and year-round trading, it keeps the fantasy spirit alive all year. Here's my favorite thing about FFPC leagues. They stand the test of time. They've never had a single dynasty league fold thanks to their orphan season. When you join an FFPC league, you can count on it staying around. They've completely revamped their dynasty for sale pages now on the web and app, making it easier to scout and snag the perfect dynasty team. Have you ever dreamed of turning a diamond in the rough into a champion? FFP. See Orphans offers that exact thrill. Join the ranks of savvy managers at FFPC. Use our code NERDS for $25 off. Visit myffpc.com. Explore the dynasty landscape. Find your next challenge. The FFPC, where your dynasty journey begins. Remember, that's code NERDS for your special discount on your next league. Jaden Daniels. <laughs> <laughs> So Jaden Daniels, quarterback LSU. <laughs> what an intro. Six foot four, two hundred and ten pounds. He is twenty three years old. He'll be twenty four in December of this coming year. Um, or of this year, I mean. Uh, he didn't run anything, so there's no speed scores or anything. Last year, uh, in twelve games, he completed seventy two or yeah, seventy two point two percent of his passes, three thousand eight hundred and twelve yards. 40 touchdowns against four interceptions. And then on the ground, he had another 1,134 yards rushing and another 10 touchdowns. Dual threat craziness going on right here. Dual threat quarterback. This guy, this is a guy (laughs) that... This is the guy. Screams Ah! dynasty fantasy football points to me. He is (laughs) dynasty gold. This is... When I, when I say Caleb Williams is like the 1A, this is 1B, and I'm really considering taking him in a league where I have these two number one overall picks to get a share of him because what he offers with the Russian ability. But, like, I'm not even going to start there because that's doing him a disservice because then it makes him sound like he's just a, a Russian quarterback, but he is not. This guy can throw the football. I came away, you know, for not watching really any LSU this year and, like, him winning the Heisman, like, oh, Daniel, Jane Daniels winning the Heisman. Okay, you know, what's up with this guy? And I, you know, I know – Early in the year, you were like, oh, he's just okay. Mm-hmm. I'm like, oh, okay. I guess we'll see then. It must have been a rough year to Heisman. But I watched more tape on him than any other quarterback because I enjoyed it that much. Mm-hmm. Um, he he is a very smart quarterback. Like, you can see him. He, he has command of the pocket. He's got good pocket presence. He's He goes through his reads very smoothly. He gets the ball out so naturally. He's got a really nice deep ball that's real accurate. Um, he's got a nice arm. To, he, he doesn't have, like we mentioned before, like, oh, the real strong. There's a difference between having a strong arm and throwing the ball deep. Like, he could throw the ball deep. But he doesn't necessarily have a strong arm. He doesn't have a lot of zip on that. I but would like, agree with that 100%. His deep ball accuracy is it's, good. It's really mm-hmm. good in pushing the ball downfield. And him in the pocket, to me, screams NFL quarterback. And. Some of these Russian quarterbacks are like, okay, let's see if we can get it put together, throwing a quarterback. Because if he does, he could rush the ball really well. Where he could throw the ball really well and run extremely well. So I, I love that he was able to get the ball out quick, get out with ease. Doesn't have to a lot, you know, not a lot of torque in his body. Um, what's the former Packers quarterback? Brett Favre. Brett Favre. That we're gonna uh, that works for oh uh, Kirk Benkert yeah so like he did a really he did a really good video mm-hmm. on Jane Daniels if you want to watch like if you want to watch a quick breakdown that's like eight minutes of Jane Daniels Brett like <laughs> Brett Brett. he has a good know. version Bart Star I need to watch that I haven't seen yeah that yet. and he, he breaks it down Matt pretty simply for him and he kind of says like look at how naturally he gets out with that twitch in, in his hips like it's so natural he doesn't have to, like he doesn't have to torque it it just comes out the ball comes out so doesn't naturally have to torque it and he's really yeah. right in that statement Shake. so for me for something. Sit there, understand and like defensive schemes. Go through his pr- progression uh, reads. Move outside the pocket. Know when to run and know not when to run because he does not look to run first. It really isn't what he wants to do. He's he's a really good quarterback in passing alone. But then you throw in his rushing ability, and things start to get real gross for him. And this is where I go from six to midnight. Gross, gross in, a in a good way, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Six okay. to midnight right, kind right. of way. <laughs> he is just to clarify. Just it's like, like I thought you loved him. He is such a good run. He's not. He's not an okay runner. He's a fantastic runner, he's and fast. he he is he has these big long strides. So he's eating up yards 
quickly. And when he runs the ball, he's not running the ball for like, oh, three, four yards. Like, he, he's getting like 15 yards per run, and he runs a lot. Obviously, we saw he had over 1,000 yards rushing. Yep. Mm-hmm. And he knows, like, and he doesn't just run and then slide. He'll juke a defender. Yeah. There's one play. I can't remember what team he was playing. He, did, he, he went to go stop and cut. And the defender literally, like it was like a movie, was like his hands up in air, <laughs> throwing himself to the other side, and he got another five yards. Yeah. He's such a smooth runner, and he's got good vision on the move. This is somebody that I feel very confident, very confident in being a fantasy football quarterback one for multiple years. I said on this show that I'm in a league, a UDPL league, where I have the one-two, and I was like, yeah, I'm just going to take Marvin Harrison Jr. there because I, da- I have good court- I have Anthony Richardson, I have Pat Mahomes, and I have Daniel Jones. Like, I don't necessarily need a quarterback. Mm-hmm. But I need a ru- receiver because I only have Jackson Smith and Jigga because I blew my team up. That being said, I don't know. I don't think in a super flex league, I don't see any way possible I could take any receiver over Jaden Daniels. And I don't care if they are going to be like Justin Jefferson. You know, if they are... Because the thing is, if... I- and that's the tough part. Like, I would rather take Jane Daniels and be able to trade for a guy like Justin Jefferson than gamble on, like, as sure as I am, Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be good. Like, I don't see any way Jane Daniels is not a relevant fantasy football quarterback because he's for sure going to get the draft capital. He's not getting out of the top three. So even Drake May goes to, he's not getting out of the top three. No, well, not according to Ben Tolick. That's fine. He's not getting out of the top three, Ben. Sorry. <laughs> His tape, I mean, it just blew me away. All facets of it, too. It wasn't like... It wasn't like, oh, well, like he does, he, he got a couple good throw ball, deep balls here. And it wasn't because he had Brian Thomas and Malik Neighbors, two first round receivers. Because sometimes you'll see that too, like, oh, he had two really good receivers. They made a game. No, his ball placement was beautiful. Like, he has some Michael Penix in that arm on the deep ball a little bit. Like, when it comes to deep ball accuracy, Michael Penix was my favorite. I was going to say, Michael Penix was, was, was amazing on that. Amazing. Mm-hmm. But the second best deep ball throw I saw of this whole process. Jane Daniels, your Heisman Trophy winner. So, absolutely loved his tape. He's my 1B. If I'm doing a startup draft, like when we're doing our uh, anniversary league, and I know this is kind of downfall of me being a league, but like, there's no way I would let this guy get out the second round of a startup draft. Like, I'm willing to – I this is the kind of gamble that I am willing to start drilling on, Listen. right? Like, there's some gold in those hills. There's some oil on that ground. Like, I am willing to I'm willing to invest in gold here. and oil. This is the most valuable I said those hills. hills. I said those hills. Right. And then oil on that ground. Okay, but this is the most valuable property of all time. Yeah. There's gold yeah. and oil. Well, I mean, look yes. at him. He's a dual threat guy. <laughs> and I'm gonna start. Trying I'm gonna get rich, bitch. I'm gonna start <laughs> I'm gonna start there with the rushing ability. Rubies, the, sec- the second diamonds. he comes into the league, he he's he's gonna be the second best rushing threat. Because he's he's not Lamar Jackson, no one is, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but he's going to be the second best guy, I think, immediately. Um, just there's there's no way that there's no one else that has his combination of speed and, like you had mentioned, stop start ability um, to kind of make guys miss and and look silly and and just beat them to you know make them look like they got bad angles, all sorts of stuff. He has all that element. He's just a notch below from a physical standpoint. Um, uh, Lamar Jackson with his rushing ability. So he's going to be number two in the league in my so opinion. So pretty elite. He's pretty elite in the rushing mm-hmm. department. For what I see, I think he's a little bit better of a thrower of the football than Lamar Jackson was when he came into the league. I would agree with that. Um, so that that is nice. Not to say that he's without warts, though, in that area. So I, I do want to highlight some of the things that I saw when I was watching the tape. And, yes, he will – hit some beautiful passes and make everything look perfect at times. But there are also times when a guy's on a short dump off pass that he just air mails it five yeah. yards above his head. And, and that happened more than once. So it's not, it's not like just one time I saw that. So that is in his game as well. And I, and can that stuff get ironed out through coaching? We've seen it before. We've seen guys improve. We've seen Jalen hurts. I think take big strides in, in his, overall consistency with his accuracy. So it can be coached into somebody or coached out of somebody, I guess those kind of inconsistencies, but it's there. I want it. I want it noted. I want people Mm -hmm. to know that that's within the realm of his game. I mean, Deshaun Watson is a perfect example of a guy that will look great on one play, but then 
throws one in the ground or throws one over a guy's head and it's maddening and it can be almost drive killing at times in the NFL if that's something that continues. So I think his legs are good enough that it is going he can get away with that stuff in college and he'll likely be able to even get away with it in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's, it's there and it's part of his game that I think uh, people are going to live with. But from a fantasy standpoint, it, there's gold in them hills and there's oil in that water, you know, <laughs> I mean, oil in the ground there. They, it's oil everywhere. and water. They mix great. <laughs> so, <laughs> Hey man, there's oil and water. You've seen those offshore. I <laughs> uh, no, I, Matt, I, I think, I think you and I are, are in a similar vain uh when it comes to Jaden Daniels because while he will more than likely be the quarterback two for me for fantasy football purposes NFL wise I don't think he would be and it that doesn't really matter for this because we play fantasy football right but but it is something to keep in the back of our minds because I while I think he will score fantasy points and he will do it early and often I do wonder how steady the rest of his game is for long-term success, similar to like a Justin Fields. Yep. You know, I, I kind of lump those guys together where the traits are there, but the inconsistencies can be a little bit frustrating. The other thing that is just something I want to highlight, just because it's weird to me, for somebody that is a five-year starter and had a Heisman Trophy winning season this year, 3,800 yards, 40 touchdowns, why up until this point did he not have a single season over 3,000 yards? Why did he not have a single season over 17 touchdowns was the highest he had up until this point? Like, why such a big discrepancy in all of the numbers? Can guys make big leaps? Sure. Absolutely. It does happen. So it's not unheard of. But usually you at least see another season where they were building up to that. And so that's the thing that's really wild to me. And even like yards per attempt, like he was in the sevens and eights in his, his entire career. Boom. And now all of a sudden 11. he's almost at 12, yeah, 11, seven. Yep. Like, so there was just a lot of things like that, that do at least make me pause for a moment and say, is this something he can continue consistent? Like, was there a big evolution in his game or was it just, was it one of those seasons? And that's what I don't know. And so I think that's the thing that's a little bit maddening and frustrating to me because you talked about a player that you felt like was Jekyll and Hyde. I feel like I'm Jekyll and Hyde when I look at him because on one hand, the, the fantasy upside is Mahomes and Allen. And like the fantasy upside is 1 million percent there. But I just don't have the same level of confidence that you do in the prospects. See, overall. that never worries me as much for these college kids because it's such a small window they're playing in anyways. Like, and sometimes... Things just click. Like it comes together. It could be a coach in. Uh, it could be another players around you. The, any, anything. Sometimes things just click for somebody. They, they, they finally put together. Like all of a sudden, you know, they're bad. And then all of a sudden, they're good. And you're like, oh, wow, where did that come from? And it happens. And, you know, to me, I'd rather, like, I get worried if it's like a little bit like this. Isn't that, isn't that, isn't that good? Well, I mean, it was it was this. It wasn't even up and down. I'm like, talking about, like, even in their play. Like, I, I watch your play. Rich is saying he's worried when it's up and down. During the season? A a a rise at some point in somebody's sure. life, especially college career. We talk about it all the time. What we don't do is allow for these guys to get better. And maybe sure. he just got better. And it, it, definitely possible. Like, yeah. like, we always say, I wish they'd go back one year, right? I wish I'd go back one more year cause like, so they could put it all together because they're close. And right. sometimes, like, that can happen. And, I mean, obviously having Brian Thomas, Malik like Neighbor, something like that helps you as well. But I mean, like you said, it's just I I watched a lot of his tape mm-hmm. and I came away completely satisfied. Like, mm-hmm. and you're right, did he overthrow a couple of those dumb balls? But so did Caleb Williams. So did every you know what I mean? Like, so does everybody at some point. That's why I'm not part. as high in this draft class as you guys. So I don't know. <laughs> when we're chasing that dynasty Lake gold again, down. you know, you're talking about a player that could be a top ten overall fantasy football scorer for. Years to come, like uh, that, absolutely. He, could be he's true. got a chance to be the number one quarterback in this class from a fantasy perspective, and be a top six fantasy football quarterback going forward. So, yeah. when you're talking about like a potential ADP jump for people that are gonna be like thirsty on, like this is the guy. And, and I want right? to make it clear: I am not saying that I don't think Jaden Daniels can be an incredible fantasy quarterback. I, I think that is absolutely, positively. A, a likely scenario, but I do, there's just enough yellow flags in there for me where I'm 
I'm just a little bit more hesitant. And See, w- and one more one more yellow flag that I have is the fact he's six foot four, he's two hundred and ten pounds, and he he does not protect himself when he runs. I've seen him yeah. literally he, he, get power power drived into the ground. They'll change the that game. when they give him. Uh, yes, he he, he, he <laughs> left the Alabama game that they yeah. could have maybe he won had he jump. been in there. We got power drive. Yeah, we yeah. got picked up and power yeah. drive. Yeah. Listen, once they uh, give him a hundred million dollars guaranteed, uh, they'll they'll be. You, you think so? That. But Josh Allen still plays the same way Josh Allen always yeah, has but played. Josh like, Allen's he's two, he's two hundred forty pounds. Yeah, he's no. That's different. my concern. That's my concern. Yeah, if he still keeps playing like Josh Allen, only at two hundred and ten pounds. That's yeah. that's what I'm worried. And about. I I was actually surprised to see two ten. He looked very slight out there. I think he probably bulked up for. Dude, he, he probably did. That's probably why I didn't. That's why he didn't, didn't run. run. He didn't do any of the the, the drills because he was. He was drinking milkshakes. Yeah, eating, eating add, Wonder, add Wonder Bread yep. full of peanut butter. I came away, like, really impressed with his film because going into it, I mean, Jaden Daniels has started for five years. And, like, I mean, I've seen a lot of Jaden Daniels at Arizona State. Um, and it was very underwhelming. Yeah, and it was just... It was. It, he wasn't who he is now. I mean, like, like you said, but I think... It just looks like something has clicked because, I mean, just his fundamentals as far as, like, reading the field, it's just, like, what you teach. Like, he reads through the goalposts, and that's through the middle of the field to get a read on the safeties. And then he's going one, two, three through his progressions and throwing on time. Um, And then on top of that, like, he's an extremely gifted athlete and runner, and he's going to get you explosive plays and chunks and 25 yards here, 30 yards here. Like, oh, those are are fantasy points. Um. And, and then another thing is, like, he understood matchups, and he would throw it to neighbors when he, he knew neighbors had a really good matchup. And I like seeing that stuff because that, that just tells you, like, the game is slow to him, and he's, like, he's looking at, at what's out there, and he's taking what the defense has given him. Um, as far as, like, cons, I think he needs to work on his back shoulder ball a little bit, um, especially for the NFL where guys are going to be a little more evenly matched up. And uh, I, just same as you guys, I was a little bit worried about his ball velocity. But I think an important thing to note is throws are longer in college due to the hash marks. In the NFL, throws are a little shorter because of the hash marks from, from the further You're, hash you're always the in the middle, line. basically. Yeah, exactly. So um, I, say, it, it's nothing to be, like I'm worried about. But, uh, he, you know, he's not he doesn't have like a rocket arm or howitzer or whatever. But um, I'm right there with you, Rich, like. It sounds like weird. Uh, Caleb Williams is like this touted. It's because of the talent and the ceiling with Caleb Williams. But dude, we're talking fantasy football points. Fantasy football points for sure, dude. This guy. This is it. They're there. This is what you're. This is what you're looking for. Yeah. This is it. When you draft Lamar Jackson in Dynasty in the first round of Superflex League, you don't go be like. Yeah, this guy's gonna throw for a ton of yards. You're like, I'm getting Lamar. This dude's gonna rush for a thousand yards. I'm gonna crush my league. Right? That's what you get here. And I, and I wrote that my last note was, if you love Lamar Jackson, you're going to really like him as mm-hmm. a player. And and I don't know why you wouldn't love Lamar Jackson for fantasy purposes. So True. most people are going to like this guy. And it's it's why he's my one. And it's why. And I, so what you're saying is like you're you'd consider him at one overall too, and super flex. Depending on what happens in the draft, obviously. So um, and, and I and I in one league yeah. that. So I have two, and you're right. I want to see what happens in the draft. But even if, I mean, if he goes to Washington or New England, it doesn't. T- Switch it for me. I'm like, oh, in New England, he'll just run more. In Washington, he'll throw more. <laughs> and again, we we already laid out in the, in the past show all the people that need in the top ten. There's even if he gets past the top three, he's not getting out of the top twelve. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, there's no way in hell he's gonna drop. No, far. someone will trade up. Or he's not getting the top five. That's what I. Yeah, yeah. he's not I, moving. I'm saying as a worst case scenario, he's a top twelve guy, and that's gonna pick that get people fired. Yeah, exactly. if you pass on him, so. And I'm in a league, so like where I said I had those two leagues where I had the one one. One is more built to win now, and one's kind of like I only have Trevor Lawrence and nothing else. So I think in the one where like I'm winning now, whatever, I think I'm gonna take Caleb Williams there. Which is funny because I would think the opposite. I'm sorry. Daniels might I'm sorry. Push you over sooner. push you over the top. Yeah, I'm sorry. The one I'm gonna win now, I'm thinking about taking Jane Daniels, and the one that's a long term build. I'm thinking about taking because that one I have one one I have one four and mm-hmm. one twelve and this I have one one and that's it and my team is built so like I think I'm gonna take Jane Daniels one one overall in that league and then take Caleb Williams another so I have two shares and when you play in multiple leagues like you do and most of us do it's like 
I like to diversify a little bit, you know, make sure. I that get I it. Get, if I guys are some, close. For me, oh, yeah, I'm like, you're, you're screw not, it. You don't, if you I don't like a guy, I yeah. like a guy. He's, yeah. he's on my team. So, like, me, so, like, from that standpoint, from fantasy wise, what would you guys advise our listeners at this point? Like, again, it's way too early. Would, do you think that's a terrible idea to take Jane Daniels over Caleb Williams in Dynasty Rookie Draft? I don't think it's terrible. I would not do it, though. I, listen, I think, I think if it's, if you're in the midst of a rebuild, I would go Caleb Williams. If you're if you're if you're looking for a foundation piece, I think I would probably go Caleb Williams. He's going to be a little bit safer, and he still has immense upside. Yeah. If I'm somewhere else other than square one of a rebuild, I I would think about Jalen Daniels. So like what I just mentioned. Yeah, because I, I just it doesn't necessarily even have to be a contender. I as long as he's not your first piece, I think it's okay because he's yeah. he's a high upside guy that could really either. Hasten your return to glory, or 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 push you over the top if you're if you're. Close I would to rather talent. personally, if I'm a contender or somebody that thinks they could be a contender, I would rather trade that pick personally than take Jaden Daniels and hope that he is what we think he is. Because we we as that much as we that hope, wasn't an option. It is. You're making <laughs> it up, you're it's making always up, an option. No, you're making up trading. New trading is an no, option. You're I would new rather trade for a known commodity and then worry that he ends up having a Trevor Lawrence season. Yeah, or worry I, I that he thing, has. A, but nobody's giving you like nobody like. Like I offered one team for something, they're like it was like Jordan Love, and they're like, ah, I view Jordan Love in a one-one equally. So I'm like, oh, okay, <laughs> never mind. Yeah. That's the thing. Like you're not gonna yeah. get. Like I know, I know, I understand what you're saying. Well, I mean, if you're willing to tr- take it's Jane Daniels one-one, then maybe it's worth it because that's what you're saying. One of them you take Jordan Love or Jane Daniels. One of them you take Caleb Williams. Yeah. So if that's the case, I would probably rather have Jordan Love, even though I'm not a big Love guy because I've seen it. Yeah. I haven't seen it from Daniels. Dude, you're all Love. Okay. Yeah, you move them up your rankings, right? <laughs> Would you? All so, where up. do you think about Jane Daniels ahead of like the receiving core in the Superflex League? Is that a hundred percent for you? Oh yeah, I'd take them over the receivers easily. I mean, in Superflex at this point, you have to. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It's Which is, easy. I never thought like going this when I took those one ones. If you're like, oh, do this right, you'd be doing Jane Daniels later. I'm like, there's no zero percent. All Caleb. I took those picks with Caleb Williams in mind before mm-hmm. the year started. This was yeah. last year I took them. I think was everybody was in that spot, dude. I mean, I mean we're in Devi leagues, and Jane Daniels wasn't even drafted. Like he's not even being held as a Devi right, player. Right. Right. Like. And we do six rounds. I have the first pick in that one league, and I'm like, yes. Oh, in the NEO league. Yeah. Oh man. No, no. no. Uh, in the Talking Dynasty. Oh, the Talking League. Dynasty League. Yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah, so the move is if like you if you like Jane Daniels, see if you could move back to one two, and just get anything, at all, anything. Throw, hey, give me Marvin Mims. You know what I mean? Give me uh, <laughs> give me three one, give me three or give me three two. Now move back to one two. Like if, if that if you like him that much, I would definitely still try to get a plus. Get a plus, and that's what I'm going to do with the one league where. If, Pro, not anymore about, because they're <laughs> listening, but you know whatever. <laughs> Hey, Hypothetically, all right. So moving on to this next guy, we we have we've we've crossed all the bridges here with I think so, with Daniels, right? yep. Guys, I got to tell you about my friends at Underdog Fantasy. Right now, they have the pre NFL Draft 2024 Best Ball is live on Underdog. Draft your favorite rookie sleepers you've discovered in the Dynasty Nerds film room. Play in three dollar contests all the way up to thousand dollar contests. Draft your team and never worry about setting a lineup. You need to get in on this action ASAP. Sign up at Underdog with the promo code NERDS. And Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100 for new members only. And yes, Dynasty Nerds is still giving new users a free Nerd Herd and Dynasty GM annual bundle membership with your deposit of $10 or more at Underdog by using that promo code NERDS. So you get all our tools all access to the Nerd Herd by putting a $10 deposit down in there. Your Dynasty Nerds promo code will be sent by email within 48 hours of sign-up. New members only. Must be 18 plus, 19 plus in Alabama and Nebraska, 21 plus in Massachusetts and Arizona, and present in a state where Underdog Fantasy operates. Terms apply. Concerned with your play? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. Visit www.ncpgambling.org. In Arizona, call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. In New York, call 1-877-HOPE-NEW-YORK. In Tennessee, 1-800-889-9789. All right, half the show. <laughs> Thirty <laughs> minutes in, back <laughs> to six o'clock. Sorry, Joe Milton, we're not talking about you anymore. No. Oh, we, it's going to be a short conversation. <laughs> a long fly ball deep to center field. <laughs> All right, uh, next guy up, Drake May, North Carolina quarterback, six foot four, two hundred and twenty three pounds, nine and one eighth inch hands, thirty two and a quarter inch arms, which doesn't really matter all that much. Um, twenty one years old, he is going to be turning twenty two in August, end of August. 
He didn't do any of the uh, drills, so I don't have any of those numbers. But in 12 games last year, he completed 63.3% of his passes, threw for six or 3,608 yards and 24 touchdowns against nine interceptions. He had 112 rush attempts for 449 yards and nine more touchdowns. So, Drake May, I, I feel similar to how it's been with guys like Justin Herbert and C.J. Stroud, where he's been a big name for a long time. And there are flashy new toys that come in, and everybody's excited, and everybody talks about them. And these guys kind of move down the board a little bit and ultimately still end up being as productive, if not more productive, than guys that went ahead of them. Watching Drake May play football, he, from a, a size physicality standpoint, everything prototype, you Prototype, man. Prototype. <laughs> everything you yeah. want. Justin Herbert. Yeah. He, he, I mean, he's got, he's got the build. He's got the weight. I mean, 223 pounds. He'll probably even add more. He's going to be playing at 230, 230. Like, he's going to be built like a Ben Roethlisberger, big, physical, cannon of an arm type of guy. Uh, and, and speaking of his arm, I mean, he really does. He has an incredibly strong arm. Uh, and he makes it look relatively easy when he's throwing the football. He, he's, a, he's a solid athlete. He's a guy that, I mean, he's a redshirt sophomore, so this is his third season. He's been playing uh, the past two seasons. Has a ton of snaps. Has like 2,000-some snaps at the quarterback position. So, I mean, he's played a lot of football over the past two years. If you look at his 2022 numbers, they are even a little bit better than his 2023 numbers, similar to Caleb Williams yeah. and, and some other guys in they this kinda, class. They kind of transitioned from an air raid to um, – more pro style offense at this right. season. And you're missing a Josh Downs and yep. some good players that entered the NFL and and their what was supposed to be their best wide receiver, uh Tez Walker, he missed most of the season. Uh about halfway through the year he was allowed back to playing again. And you know, that's that's tough when your number one guy misses most of the year and then you have to try to get a rapport with him again. And, and it was it was a more run style offense too, if I if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. I think their rush attempts Hampton, went up like 100, hundred, hundred and fifteen or something like yeah, that. Yeah, Hampton's a nice, nice running back that'll yeah. be in next year's class and they did they ran the ball a lot more. And so so he, he didn't have quite as eye popping numbers as he did the year before where he put up forty three hundred yards and thirty eight touchdowns. So I mean he had legitimate yeah, like absolutely. monster monster yeah. numbers uh but but the other thing is he's he's a good runner of the football as well uh he's not nearly as fast as a, a Jaden Daniels or somebody like that uh but he is a guy that's going to be able to similar to a Justin Herbert uh he's he's going to be able to put up you know three to five hundred yards but I think the thing that is a little uh, it's something that I I don't think I thought about a ton until today when you get in that red zone and you have a guy that's going to be weighing in around 230 pounds, there's a lot of goal line touchdowns or short yardage touchdowns that he's going to be able to get because he's such a big physical guy. So I think he will get more on the ground, not necessarily yardage, but he scored nine touchdowns last year. I mean, but red zone seven the year before. So he's done it. Red zone stuff. I think he's going to be an absolute monster. So the, the, the con on him is, honestly watching him because overall I think he's very sound mechanically, but there would just be random times where you're like, what, what was that throw? Like what, what happens there? So here, here's what I see when I, and I don't know, agree, don't agree, whatever. I think I'm probably a little bit more negative. He's still my third guy. It's not like mm -hmm. he's way down my draft board. So I, it's not like I don't like him. Uh, some of those things where he was like, what the hell happened? His footwork to me looks a little slow at times. Slower. So this was a guy that I almost had to watch in two stages, this right? Is a guy. So I watched him directly after um, Jaden Daniels, and he looked like he was running in sand. Like he looked that slow to me at first. I was like, this guy is a freaking mess. I don't know how. And then I started watching some other guys. I was like, all right, maybe he's not as bad. So I went back and I was like, okay, he's not that bad. But at times, I think he gets very kind of lackadaisical would be the way I describe it with his footwork. And I think it can lead to some bad throws mm -hmm. and combined his lack, sometimes lackadaisical footwork with kind of maybe a, a little bit of a longer delivery. I feel like he really cocks the ball back at times. Even you can see it when he even, even when he pump fakes, some guys mm -hmm. do a little quick thing. He's, he's like really cocking the arm all the way back. Blake Bortles. 
yeah, yeah which, he gets him on that pump fake though. He's got that thing down to a science. It's it's just it's it's long. It's, a, it's another part of the process. You know what I mean. So if you're slow on your footwork, you got this long delivery. It can get you in trouble sometimes, and maybe you, you know you don't have your feet underneath you correctly, and and maybe that is what caused some of those errant throws. Because mm-hmm. I saw it too, and I was I was kind of just I was trying to figure out like why these inconsistencies were happening. And it's weird because it doesn't happen all the time. Uh, he, he actually, he had nine interceptions this year. So not a terrible number, not a great number. Uh, but as far as turnover worthy plays, he actually only had nine on the season, according to PFF. So a couple of those interceptions were, you know, the receiver's fault or something like that. So it's not like they were constantly happening, but there would be one or two times a game where you'd just be like, I don't know. I don't know what happened there. So this was, this was when I was, I go back to like what I said about Bo Nix, who, he catches a ball and he could flip his hips and make a quick throw. Mm-hmm. I, I never, I don't think I'll ever see Drake may do that. I just don't think he's got that kind of movement in him, which can get him in trouble. Cause I think if he had that, I don't, I think his footwork wouldn't look so slow and be so see, I'm get not him into those it as issues. slow as you are. I, I may, maybe we're seeing it differently. <laughs> Cause for me, I, I liked his footwork. I thought he processed everything. Well, it didn't look like his top half and lower half were disjointed typically like, yeah. and, and, and Maybe maybe I need to go back and watch it a little closer on his footwork. I didn't see it was, that as it, much. Like I said, it was something that was more glaring the first time I watched it and less glaring as I kind of went. So maybe it was a perfect storm of watching a bad game, following Jaden right Daniels. Right after Daniels, who's that so it kinda, fast. That it kind of stuck with me, and sure. then I was kind of looking for it almost throughout. Sure, because so he you is a good... Bias, you know, when you're watching film. For sure, and, and that's the hard part about this is it's right. very subjective overall. Yeah. Um, you know, because he does, he comes from a very athletic family. Like his whole family played like college sports, like his brothers, his dad is everybody. He was actually a great, like high school basketball player as well. So, I mean, he's an athletic dude. So, but yeah, I'll go back and watch. Cause maybe, maybe there was something I missed there. And I might just be overly tilting it. You know what I sure. mean? To, to the, to the bad. Um, so I do have more to watch and I would love to see actually some of his 22 stuff. Cause that's when he was in that area. Yeah, the best offense, numbers. Yeah. And those were, those were his best numbers. So I'm going to, I'm going to go back and dig in some more. But we have we have time, you know. Yeah. Drafts far far away at this point. Yeah, I liked his athleticism. I thought it was weird when he like missed, like he he missed he missed low a lot more than he missed. Like what people like you mentioned, like oh sail balls away or something. Like he'd miss, like he'd drive the ball into the ground more than he would, like sailing the ball away. Um, and he just seems like when I watch him play, it kind of seems like, it, like oh this this is a dude who has just natural God given ability. It's the dude now. <laughs> This is the dude. We're changing up the narrative. This is and the dude. He's a bro. Like, <laughs> he could play this position well. His weapons this year around him and his low line were kind of like uh, so I don't I don't think they help. But like I was like, man, if he could just get some like if he could just take like he has all the tools. And for him, I would just love to see him come in and that's what I mentioned New England. Like just sit for like a little bit. Even if it goes to watch, just for a little bit, like not long, for a little bit. Yeah. And 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 see the game being played in front of you, not like not practicing like an actual NFL game right in front of you with coaches in your ear. Hey, this is why this is this and this, and for you to see it that way because he does have that Justin Herbert ability. He has the chance to be the he has the potential to be the best NFL quarterback in this group. Mm-hmm. Um, I love the other I like the other guys' fantasy football upside more mm-hmm. than Drake May, but I really like May's longevity here. To be to play in this league because it looks like this is a guy that come his in. His floor seems really high to me. Yeah, he seems super safe. Um, just for being so young. Just for reference, though, he's not in like the Josh Allen. He's not. He's not that kind of. I don't think he's going to run that. Much. No, right. no. Not think at more all. Ben Roethlisberger. Like that's that's who I kind of see him. Like young Ben, not old Ben. Young Ben, because <laughs> old Ben didn't do nothing. Uh, but he but got the ball out really fast. What do you mean? Yeah, but 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 young Ben Roethlisberger. I mean, he he would get you three four hundred yards a season. Yeah. But he would do. I mean, at the goal line, nobody was stopping him. But even in the pocket, you know, he was able to hold up and, and take more hits and more abuse than a Jaden Daniels is going to be able to take. And, and some guys for like sure. that. He's uh, he's a well built built dude for sure. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure we kind of differentiate. No, no, no. Yeah, I don't think he's getting you, you eight hundred yards. Yeah, you talked about the goal line stuff. I think people are going to naturally in their brain kind of connect those dots to a, a Josh yeah, Allen. Yeah, type. no, no, no. And I just don't think he's that that. Type think of more athlete. three four hundred yards per season, yeah. but could be a eight nine ten touchdown guy because. Hey, we're getting it within three yards. Yeah. He he's taking the ball in. He could definitely move. Like he he's athletic enough. He he could move. And his arms, yeah, Justin Herbert style. Like mm-hmm. he, I mean, if you're looking to hit somebody like 
the, the split two defenders and drive it in there in the numbers and hit it there on time, like May's the kind of player that could do that. Mm-hmm. He's just he's one of those people that just when you watch him play, like this kid's a quarterback. And there's and there's not a throw talented. that he can't make. And I think that's Correct. that's the thing that differentiates him from some of the other guys in here is there is not a throw in the NFL game that he cannot make. And and what's also really important, they need to put this into like your your thought presses. Not only is there not a throw that he can't make, there's not a throw that he's afraid to make. There's so many negatives so going on here. I can't he tell has. I cannot I can't tell if he's good or not. But listen, that hurts. <laughs> he, You'd be surprised how many prospects or players that hurts because they don't. They're afraid to throw that interception or they're afraid to throw that ball in that tight window because you can't operate like that in the NFL. You, You're just you not. sometimes he's overly confident. In sometimes it. he is. But I would rather that. A hundred percent. I will take that one interception for the other 10 completions you make yep. in that scenario. Especially for fantasy. That's how you win <laughs> games. So for me, I love his confidence. I love his natural ability. I love his size. I love everything about it. If my team was drafting a quarterback, I'd feel very comfortable with Drake May going on there. And I feel very comfortable with him as, as my quarterback three. And that's what I'm saying. Where like, I'm real excited about this quarterback class because I have three guys that I feel very confident in dynasty fantasy football taking one, two, three. Mm-hmm. And when you're in Superflex leagues, if you had a third pick, there's not always that guy. No. And this year, like, which pushes now, if you have four or five, where you get a Marvin Harrison Jr. or Malik Neighbors at five, four, a Brock Bowers but at we'll, six. What will seven. probably happen is, and we see this happen almost every year, is Marvin Harrison is still going to get bumped up. Sometimes he'll go at two, sometimes he'll go at three. Yeah. He's going to get bumped up. So you're going to get May yeah. at five, six, seven, I think. That's that's where I mean there were there was a few years back when it was Justin Herbert was going like 10 12 yes. it, was, it was insane it was insane but I'm I think people least. I think people have caught on yeah that it, it is probably but same thing value, happened with CJ last year at five the same thing happened with CJ last year yeah he uh, originally was higher end and then as the process went on now Bijan's going ahead of him now sometimes Jackson Smith and Jigba goes at him sometimes Gibbs goes out of him like and they just especially people get fatigued with especially the not super sexy quarterbacks, which that's kind of the category May falls into. He's, I think in rookie dress, we're going to see him closer to five and six than we are consistently going at three. What do you I think? could be wrong. I think May is a bigger project than Caleb Williams or Jaden Daniels is. Um, I, I do like Drake May, though, quite a bit. And I, I think I was just running some numbers here. My computer died, so I lost all my notes. But um I was running some numbers on the quarterback data I was looking at earlier Mm -hmm. because Rich mentioned, like, he may have to sit a year. And I don't think that should be any sort of con or... I'd be fine with it. ...hesitancy. I'm fine with any quarterback sitting. The guys that usually sit end up being great, like Jordan Love, Pat Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers. From I actually ran the numbers from 2015 to 2023. All the quarterbacks drafted. There was 102 quarterbacks drafted. Only 4%. Only four quarterbacks produced a year one top 12 finish four that's, that's it, crazy man. yeah hmm. jane daniel's about to be five <laughs> so i'm just saying like don't expect he's possible year one as in their first year starting or year one in their first year in the league first year in the league okay right. yeah, which makes sense yeah because not all guys start right away and, and usually they're they, that's the thing usually guys go to really bad teams that's why they're num- that, that's why they're such high picks that's and why J- that's why Caleb Williams had such a good situation and even you know a lot of guys will sit even like two or three games at times and you know that kind of stuff can too, you so. uh can you guys guess who they were CJ Stroud Justin Herbert mm-hmm two more yep those are two Lamar Jackson how far back are we going no he now? he didn't remember Flacco 2015 oh that's right um, Pat Mahomes, Kyler yeah. Murray. Pat Mahomes sat. sat his whole year. Kyler Murray. Oh, that's right. Kyler Murray. Yeah. Yep. I've got three of them, guys. You guys need to pick up. The other one was not a top. Uh, let's see, it's not a top three. What is the parameter we're pick. going for? Fifteen to now, top twelve season in the rookie year. Oh, I was gonna say RG three, but Dak was the fourth. Dak. Dak. Okay. Yeah. Wow, Dak's year one, huh? Yep. Yeah, I remember him and Zeke is both both as rookies that year. Oh, that's, that's it, right. though. So four. I, you know. We may not look as it, at it as, like, a con or something, but some mm. people might. You know, I, I'm not going to get production from year one, even though you don't really know that when they're drafted. But nah. sometimes you can assume. But honestly, if you're in a super flex draft and you have the first, second, third pick, that's another beauty about, like, you take your quarterback first compared to the running back of the receiver. It's because, like, for the most part, they're not going to come out and be 
ball busters year one and score a ton of, of points, right? So like, I think it's gangbusters. Come nah, on, like nah, gang nah. ball busters. <laughs> <laughs> um, so like, because you want to like, if you're in that, like you're in a rebuild mode, you win the first pick next year, which is gonna be a strong running back class. So now you just got Caleb Williams, Shane Daniels. And next year you get Travian Henderson, John Jenkins. You yeah. know, like stack them up, baby. Yeah, I do like Drake May. I actually agree with Matt a little bit on the footwork thing. Like, I I only got a chance to watch like five games, but we have a ton in the film room. But I thought at times it just kind of got away from him, or he started fading to the side that he wanted to throw the ball to, and just little things like that. Um, but I, if you put him in like last year's class, like I think he still ranks like maybe even QB one. So yeah. Um, I like I like Drake May a lot. I think it went one overall and had those other quarterbacks last yeah. year for sure. Yeah, him and Caleb both would have went yep. ahead of them. Next, all right. Next up is Michael Penix Jr., quarterback from Washington, six foot two, two hundred sixteen pounds, ten and a half inch hands, thirty three and five eighths inch arms. He is twenty three. He is going to be twenty four in a couple months. Yep. May. Man. Uh, he it's didn't run anything, uh, which is not a surprise. He, last year in 15 games, completed 65% of his passes, 4,903 yards, 36 touchdowns to 11 interceptions. He was not good in the rushing department, and he did have three rushing touchdowns with eight yards. <laughs> <laughs> More than zero. <laughs> Negative college rushing yards. I hate eight it. so stupid. Yards. <laughs> So not much to write home about there except for the touchdowns. Yeah, so Michael Penix. This is a player I've been talking about all year long. And I got to tell you guys, I got to tell you this. I really like Michael Penix. Yeah! I You can spin it. I don't know how this guy cannot be a first-round pick in the NFL draft. It would not. It would blow me away. Like, I don't – and when I hear people like, well, he's got an injury history because, you know, every year in Indiana when he was there, he, he suffered season injuries. He tore his right ACL twice. Um, but that didn't show up on tape this year at all. Like he was fine. He was fine moving in the pocket. He'd still run the ball when he had to. You saw that, you know, versus Texas. You saw it uh in the national championship game. And you and saw his, it. his medicals came back clean. Yeah, that was that was a big thing for yeah. him at the combine was they, they came back and they were like, Nope, he's solid. Yeah. Bill so, of health. Yeah, and when you talk about like some people like so the two biggest flaws for Michael Penix you'll hear is his injury history, which mm-hmm. is two ACL tears, and then when he gets outside the pocket is where he starts to look his worst, which is pretty consistent for most every quarterback we've talked about so far. When he gets outside Other the pocket, than Caleb. you know, they start, yeah, besides him, he's the number one pick in the draft. Mm. But when you're talking about throwing the ball, I, you're going to find a hard, you're going to be, you're going to have a hard time convincing me. There's somebody who throws a football better in this draft class than Michael Penix, yeah. because his ball is absolutely beautiful. And he does it effortlessly. It doesn't matter where you are on the field. He will drop it in where it needs to be. His accuracy and his deep ball ability is a thing of beauty. I and I had a it was a pleasure to watch his film, mm-hmm. and for him not to be like when we're not talking about guys and like we're talking about JJ McCarthy sneaking in the top twelve. It's like wow, watching him throw the football compared to JJ McCarthy is like watching two different kind of human beings play a game, right? Like, hey, they're both ants, but one's red and one's black. Like you know, or one. Eats trees, another one eats people. Yeah, I saw that movie once. Uh, <laughs> what? The f- <laughs> so I'm so lost. I was with you on everything. Penix, yeah. Wait, what? Listen, <laughs> I know. I zoned he, out for like one second, me and too. like literally, and then he was talking about trees. He's talking about somebody eating for, trees and somebody eating peoples. I'm for like, somebody what? that has, Dude, for somebody that has <laughs> leg problems, this is a player that never gets sacked, right? Never, never. Ninety ninth percentile sack rate. I saw him he get does one sack. not. Get sacked. Negative play. I think in the Oregon game, I saw him get sacked. And it's literally because the, the cornerback came around the edge and dove at him on the other side of the sideline and got him. He didn't even see him That's coming. probably why he had a positive rush yards. I was surprised when you said that. I was like, because they count sacks. Because they count sacks negative. Yards, negative right? But yeah. he never got sacked. He, he, could, he, could, he, could, he, could, he could put he could throw the ball with some zip as if he wants to. He could read the field. He could make some good decisions. Um, I mean, sometimes he'll force it a little bit. Um, I He'll, he'll throw some ints that you don't want to see. I think I think he's a he is a Doctor Jekyll and Mister Hyde a little bit. Do I think not he is. Poop, poop, I man. think he is. Here we go. An excellent quarterback when everything is right and things are going his way. And I think 
when pressure is on him, he he gets a little sloppy. He'll fade away. He'll make he, he's, he gets rid of the ball. I do agree with that. He gets rid of the ball, but There's pressure. But I I think he's I don't know if it's like a PTSD from having two, <laughs> two bad knee injuries and a bad shoulder injury that he just doesn't want to get hit anymore and and just has to do whatever he needs to do to to stay clean and get the ball out of his hands. But there are some bad throws in those situations, and and. I mean, I don't want to make light of it. It does happen. I, I don't know if, if, it, if it's in its brain that he doesn't want to get injured again or if it's in his brain that he needs to get to the pros. Like, I just – I can't get another big injury or I, I'm going to lose my shot at getting to the professional football. Uh, I, I don't know because I'm not in his head, and this is one of these things that's going to be very hard for me to figure out and kind of quantify and, and move forward with. But it's in the back of my mind that he's a different player when he's, when he's rushed than when he's not. It's and his biggest flaw. Yeah, it's his biggest flaw, and I just wanted to. I, I want. I don't want that out there. You know what I mean? I want my feelings on that to be out there because I think the rest of what you've said is right. He he. When everything is perfect around him, he looks amazing, and he's a great thrower of the football, and everything is good. But when it's not, and it's oftentimes not in the NFL, that's when he's a different player, and that's. It, but I and mean, that's when things kind of. That's when I'm like, I don't know what I'm going to get in the NFL. When I when I think about that too, because I, I I was thinking about that in a process, like man, like but for him, like the NFL quarterback is the most protected position in all of sports right now too. So like that kind of maybe with the confidence of knowing like him going okay here in the NFL, if they hit me any kind of funky way, like they're gonna get flagged. So like I'm a little bit mm-hmm. more protected now. Maybe take a little bit more risk I, by standing. And in the I pocket. totally agree with you. I hope it goes that way. If it, I don't if, know if that's the way he's thinking. Yeah. If that, that was my positive spin. I'm like, dude, I hope but he if, realizes that. But if that. in the back of his head he's, I can't get hit because these guys are bigger and stronger than the guys I was just getting broken by in college, mm-hmm. then then the worry is there, and and you can't unfix some people. You know what I mean? That are that broken. We've unfix. seen it. <laughs> you can't fix people that are that broken. <laughs> you <laughs> unfix can't people. unfix them. They're already broken. You can't <laughs> unfix them. Like a cat? You can unfix it. <laughs> You can't fix some people that are mentally broken. We've seen quarterbacks. A like Derek Carr yeah. comes to mind when I think of guy, guys that just get shell shocked. David get, Carr, yeah. Derek's Tim Couch. Derek is also <laughs> help. <laughs> Daniel Jones. <laughs> right. It it just do, it does happen, and and I hope it's I hope it hasn't happened to him. But from what I've it, seen, it puts up the the yellow, orange, red, whatever color flag. Keep you him want. in the state of Washington. Is there any way he, he makes it out of the first round? I think it's entirely possible, but I would take him in the first. I round. would have no idea why any team that remote like misses on this free agency of quarterbacks. Even if you like, say Minnesota, like they, where they pick, they pick eleven. Like, how do you not trade back up in the second round into the first to grab Michael Penix if Kirk Cousins walks? You, you mentioned Minnesota earlier with somebody, and I said, "Now nah, there's another quarterback I want in Minnesota." Michael Penix is the guy that I yeah, want in Minnesota. It'd be great there. He, he is able to literally make all the throws, and in fact, he grades even higher on the outside, outside the hash marks than he does in the middle of the field. And he's still a very efficient passer in the middle of the field too, but he literally is more efficient on the outside. Almost no quarterbacks can say that. So when he, when we talk about elite arm talent, not just strength, elite arm talent, he has that. And that's something that you can't just figure out like, you either have that at this point or you don't. Yep. And I, he he does. So I think it's easy to see who that. Who had that last year? I think it's easy What's to that? see that. Who had that last year? CJ I'm telling Stroud. CJ Shroud. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh so for me, I'm 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 with you, Rich. I'm really, really high on this kid. Like I want to figure out how to get him into that Drake May type of tier. I can't figure out how to do it. Uh, but but I really want to because I do think he's a very good decision maker, and I, I get what you're saying, Matt, about uh, about the the pressure and things about like that. Un- unfixing him, about unfixing him. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I do I hear that, but when you're able to have that elite sack rate, and you're able to continually make good decisions, it's one thing if you panic and make bad decisions. If when he panics, he still makes pretty good decisions overall. I mean, so 11, 11 interceptions this past year. Yeah, but to five thousand passing yards. 
I mean, guys are we're we're, we're excited about guys that are putting up three thousand. He's still putting up five thousand. You know, but I mean, I will say this though. Some of the INTs I saw, they, they, they weren't egregious. You know what I mean? Some of them I was confused. I was like, did that receiver run the wrong route? Like, there was some of those. Like, cause like he'd sail it in the receiver. Like, the last one I saw, like, the receiver cut in, but the ball went straight. And my first thought, I was like, ah, like, was that receiver supposed yeah. to? Like, did he think he was going straight? You yeah, know what I mean? Like, and he, I even wrote a note about that, too. I was like, some of the passes are just, I, I don't know where it was going. It's I don't, just it was miscommunication. Just, yeah, it was likely a miscommunication. You know what I mean? They weren't like a greed, right. like, INT is like, what the hell were you doing? Like, yeah. those kind of interceptions. The last thing I want to say about him is when we look at all of these quarterbacks, with the exception of J.J. McCarthy, when we look at the rest of these quarterbacks, one of the biggest things, and I waited till now to, to, to bring up this point, you look at almost every game they play against ranked opponents, and they lost. Almost every game. There's like between the top three guys that we talked about, I think they're like two and seven uh, oh, this past year mm-hmm. against ranked opponents. Like they did not play well in the biggest games. Whereas Michael Penix Jr., every time there was a big game, he always seemed to step up. He always seemed to find a way. He always seemed to put his team in the best position to win. And that's something that I want to see out of court. I want that kind of leadership. I want that kind of ability to say, like, the bigger the moment, the better I play. And unfortunately, obviously, they lost to Michigan in the national championship game. But they beat Oregon and Bo Nix twice. To beat a ranked opponent in your own division or in your own conference twice is tough to do because they learn everything they did wrong you won. You know, it's tough to be able to, to beat a team twice. Uh, they were able to beat Texas. They were able to, like, he just played He played good big. in that Texas game, too. He played great in that. And we even saw a little bit of athleticism in that Texas game. Three so runs. He, he, he's not unathletic. I mean, yeah. he had eight rushing yards. He is not unathletic. It's something... Is he preserving? Like I, that's another question in my right. mind. Like, he ran a lot more at Indiana than he ever did at. Washington. He has a good, he does a good job of moving and rushing outside, left and right outside of that like hash mark, and then resetting. Yes, like he's yeah. still looking downfield. He yeah. wants to yeah. throw the football. He resets and throws the football. He's and listen, guys, how much fun could we have with a guy with the last name Penix? <laughs> <laughs> How much fun could you have with the guy with the last name Phoenix? I mean, it's a wee show. This whole time, yes. I've been hoping that he would somehow fall to the Browns in the second round because I think he would do really good in Stefanski's system. But yeah, he would, um, which is yeah. it's probably not going to happen. Replace Deshaun pick fifty four. He's late. he's going to get drafted in the first round. And like if it, he does, I mean, where are you guys slotting him in listen, now? If he doesn't get drafted in the first round, it's it's because NFL quarter or NFL teams are worried about the same thing I'm worried about because. If if they're not and the medicals are clear, he's going in the first round for sure. Because when he when everything do you good, think AIDS age is an issue at all? I, mean, I don't I don't think I mean AIDS is a huge <laughs> issue. AIDS is an issue, <laughs> but age <laughs> is not as big. Twenty of an issue as AIDS. He'll be twenty four when you know in a month or so. Right. Whatever. I can't. I don't even know what month we're in now. Uh, it's a it's. March. Yeah, two months from now he'll be twenty four. So gonna be nine. if he if he goes in the first round though, Matt. I will ha- and I mean, and assuming we have McCarthy too, like that's that's five, five guys. quarterbacks in the first round. I mean, let's look at that's the Rams crazy. are that a potential is, landing spot. Yeah, Pittsburgh is a potential Above landing spot. Rams. Um, even though he'd have to sit a year, but that'd be great. That would be good for him. I think. Yeah. I don't think he needs to sit. I, I think, think he he's a either. ready prospect. But yeah. Yeah. but I would I was, love I was that just system. About, I was just thinking about the shell shock wearing off. But like <laughs> <laughs> a team like. Las Vegas, I could trade back up into the back end of the first. I could a team like Minnesota, trading back up in the first. A team like the Giants, I could trade back up into the Browns first. Could trade in the Browns, first. Yeah. yeah. Um. So say Atlanta goes a different way, and they, you know, they don't get a quarterback, and they go trade with the first. So like, say I would love him in Atlanta. You give somebody with that arm, Caleb or uh, uh, Kyle Pitts and Drake London. So yeah, and I think Jared asked a good question. Like, what happens when Michael Penix goes in the first round? So we have three, qu- we have four quarterbacks. We feel pretty good about going. I would 12. be shocked if we don't have at least four. I think we'll get five. And I think we will too. So he's the fifth. All right. So we say then in the super flex draft, you're going this. No, no, kind of like this order. But I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna play. Who's the bust? If there's five of them, yeah. Who's the bust? Probably Drake, three of them. Drake, <laughs> yeah, <and> McCarthy. <laughs> yeah, huh? Right, Caleb. Jane Daniels. <laughs> Jane Daniels. No, I, yeah, who knows? So, but, I mean, but maybe this goes down as the greatest draft class of all time, like since <laughs> yeah. well, forever. You don't know. I mean, 2022 or uh, 2020, we had Tua, Burrow, Herbert, Jalen Hurts. Like, 
Jordan Love, all those guys were in the 2020 class. Yeah, so there you go. They may not now, all four those. And four of those were in the first round, and, and Jalen was in the second round. So, so if Penix goes in possible. the first round, you have, so you go Caleb, Daniels, May, Marv, Neighbors, Odunze, Bowers, J.J. McCarthy. And maybe just all these extra years in college is what all these guys needed. Maybe. He, he did have a very productive year before that, too. With four thousand six hundred yards, thirty-one yeah. touchdowns. Yeah. So, are we considering picks? Yeah. So, you, are you considering then Penix? So, if he goes in the first round, you take Penix. You have probably? to take him in the first round. Of uh, no, no, no. Then after no, no, that, no. right? But like I'm nine saying nine. Then right, you take him ahead of like Brian Thomas. I'd probably take him ahead oh. of Bowers. I would. Oh, man, that's hard. First round quarterback. That'd be hard. In the Superflex tight end premium league. Yeah, oh, that'd still be hard. Man, I, I would know. take Bowers. And then what happens when like one of these running backs I mean, goes like close. in the second quarterback, round? Quarterback, like one of these running backs yeah. goes in the second round to the tar- the Cowboys or the Chargers? They're getting pushed up. I'd take quarterbacks still. Yeah, no, you're still I'm, taking would, quarterbacks, but it's yeah. getting pushed up in the conversation. But, like, so but all Mike, of a sudden, this draft is looking really freaking good in the first round. Yeah. So Michael Penix yeah. is going right around anywhere from say six to and midnight. Nine. <laughs> no midnight. The only answer. <laughs> yeah, it was midnight. Come on, Rich. <laughs> L- listen, I can't wait to like. Do our pre-draft Superflex pre-draft rankings because Panics will be the hardest one because he needs that first-round capital to yeah. jump these guys. Because like if Brian Thomas, McConkie, Xavier Worthy, and then a running back, like two runners, running backs go in the second round to really good spots. Like Panics on the outs before the draft will be on the outside just because of that possibility. Then all of a sudden Panics goes in the, the the first round, he jumps all those guys. So I'm excited to do the pre-draft mock draft and a post NFL drop mock draft because he's going to be the biggest mover out of all of them. Yeah, yeah. And, and the running backs obviously. And as I well. and I do think it's almost that binary for me that if if he goes in the first round, he's worth a first round draft pick. If he doesn't, he's not. I think I think it's then more of my questions will bubble to the surface, and I'll probably end up having almost no shares of him because it's like uh, then there was enough concern amongst these Sounds NFL like you're not going to have any shares of him. That's probably how you should look at it from probability sake. I mean, that is I just I just think they'll they'll have seen something that I have seen and it'll be almost a confirmation confirmation bias confirmation. So same thing happened to Lamar. You're like Lamar like uh where does he go in NFL? Does he go in the first? first huh? And the Ravens trade back up in the very end of the draft to go draft him. I yep. pick 31 because they want 32. that fifth year. That's yeah. that's the big deal. And, for that's it. So, and so what Matt's saying is like that that says a lot. Like if you have all these teams that are willing to pass on a quarterback. Because there's only so many free agents, yep. and there's way more teams that need a quarterback than there is free agents. So, mm-hmm. like, that says a lot. Even if, like, a team like Pittsburgh, for example, did it. So, I hope they don't. Hey, guys, let me tell you about our friends at Sleeper. Guess what? Our app is the mini is live Woo. on Sleeper right now. The Dynasty so GM. Pretty. You can use the analyzer. That you can use nice. the, uh, the, the trade calculator. And my favorite thing is the inbox, right, where all your trades from all your Sleeper leagues are right there. You can actually push – trades through the actual sleeper at and right now we could be more excited to be partners with them and right now if you don't know they are doing dfs and i know how many people that play dynasty play dfs as well and right now there's not a better place to play dfs than sleeper they're offering up to a hundred times their, your entry the highest payout in the whole dfs market right now you can track your fantasy players and your sleeper picks in real time all you gotta do is choose two to eight of your favorite players from pregame live in-game, or even across different sports. Pick more or less than the predicted stats, and only on Sleeper you can get up to 100 times your payout. You can share with your friends and get rewarded together. Make sure you use that promo code NERD so our friends know that friends sent them their way. Um, <laughs> and get your deposit match and have a good time. You know, have all your DFS, all of your fantasy leagues, and now even a Dynasty GM in one spot it is fully operational inside Sleeper right now and then when you're a nerd herd member you get that full access to that and remember Dyn- you also want to download the dinosaur nerds app because they're both in there check it out check our friend sleeper check out the dfs use that promo code nerd get your whole estate <laughs> <laughs> all right next up spencer spencer rattler <laughs> spencer rattler south carolina qb six foot two eleven nine and seven eighths inch hands 31 inch arms he is 23. He'll be 24 in September, like right around the season start. Um, his 40-yard dash was 4.95 seconds. He did a 20-yard shuttle in 4.37 seconds. The three-cone in 7.21. The broad jump of 108 inches. The vertical jump of 32 inches. Last year in 12 games, he completed 68.9% of his passes for 3,186 yards. 
19 touchdowns, eight interceptions, 104 yards rushing, and another four touchdowns. Spencer Rattler was a really, really big name quarterback coming out of high school. Uh, somebody that was was highly talked about, regarded in the community. Five star, five right? star recruit uh, goes to Oklahoma, and he, he does sure okay. Okay, he didn't have he didn't play poorly there. The problem for Spencer Rattler was they also brought in a kid named Caleb Williams. Yeah, Caleb Williams in and, his third year, and Caleb Williams came in and and just absolutely balled out, and he just had no chance to kind of recover from that. Right. So he ended up transferring to South Carolina and going to South Carolina. Everyone was kind of like, what? Why South Carolina? That was an interesting choice. But beggars can't be choosers always. So he goes to South Carolina and he's fine, uh, especially this past year. He, he, he performed a little bit better. Uh, he had the 19 touchdowns to 18 interce- or eight interceptions. Eight. Yep. Uh, so he, he was fine. A little over 3000 yards, but. South Carolina is not an offensive juggernaut by any stretch of the imagination. I think he was forcing things a bit, right? He was. There, there was a, a little bit of hero ball here, similar to, to Caleb Williams at times where uh, it just it wasn't an amazing offense. It felt like he was outgunned most weeks, and he knew it. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's, it's almost like you're starting the game at a deficit. Yeah. you got to catch up right away. Right. Uh, and then that's kind of what it looked like. And at times, he was able to do that. There's enough arm talent here where – He's able to do some of these things. The problem has always been with Spencer Rattler is the maturity. Uh, and, and that's been kind of well documented over the course of his career. He's really struggled in that aspect in the consistency. And those are two things that quarterback that are important things. You they want are. to be a leader that people want to follow, mature, smart, and you want to be able to be consistent. But there are also things that he is able to do that guys that are going to be drafted in a similar range just cannot physically do. So that's where it gets really interesting with Spencer Rattler is what do you value and what do NFL teams value? And and we'll know a lot about whether he goes in the second round. And apparently he had a fantastic senior bowl and people were like, could he sneak into the first round? I don't think that's going to happen, but, but could he be a Dak Prescott? Exactly. I think I think we could see him go as early as the second round, and we could see him go as late as the fourth or fifth round. And I think that's going to tell us a lot about where a team or the NFL in general really values him because the evaluation on him is all over the map. Yeah, I didn't love his tape. Um, I thought he was like... I was un- what he kept st- staring I, I, at I, I already know like how Rich feels about something. Before he even talks. Yeah. <laughs> like, you the can just language. read his face oh, yeah. so easily. I mean, he's he's undersized. And I feel like... When Six you foot see, 11, yeah. When, when you see a cop give somebody a sobriety test and they're like, follow my finger, you know, like this, like, that's his number one read. And that's what he does, too. Like, he's just like, I'm following that guy. Like, he doesn't really, like, go through his progressions really well. Like, he really locks on his receiver. Like, at one point, I was watching one game. I was like, does he ever look to the second read? Like, I... I I felt like I watched Legitimate. five minutes straight, yeah. and I didn't see him look at the second read once. And that's what I felt like. I had to, I had to stop the tape and like, okay, I have to see like where his like, what is going on here? Like it, it was that bad. His arm, like everybody says, his arms like really good and really like this is awesome arm. Like I didn't see like his arm was that sweet. Like I didn't have that much zip on it. You know, like I was like, oh, this is, it's a, not bad by any means, but like. From hearing people, because his name's been around for a long time, right, like, right. dude, Rattler's got an arm on him, though. Like, it's a pro arm on him. I'm like, I think it's a pro yeah. arm. I wouldn't say he has, like, the most velocity on his throws yeah. out of anybody. And that's what I mean. Like, he's pretty but, accurate. But he's a pretty yeah. accurate quarterback that can make all of the throws. Yeah. That's not about accurate. I'm talking about his, like, his arm strength. Right. So when yeah. I say his arm, like, his arm strength. I'm sorry. Yeah. You're good. Um, it, 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 his arm, like, it, like, is, I don't know, man. It just, it wasn't anything, like, that moved my needle at all. <laughs> and I, I wrote he doesn't have any glaring I didn't put weaknesses. Noodle, I, I said needle, not noodle. <laughs> um, and the fact that he had a good senior bowl is the only thing that's really kind of kept him in my like, the other like seventh range for me, honestly. Like, but uh, I also said that he doesn't do anything like outstanding. Like no. nothing that is like, this guy is going to take my team, elevate the players around him, and and take him, you know, take them to the Super Bowl playoffs. He is like a noodle in, a, in boiling water. Okay. Yeah, little little soft, very soft. 
<laughs> free wa- hot water. Easy mm-hmm. to bring. That's a different story. Yeah. You can shake the box in here. <laughs> okay. Shake the box with the cook noodles. So, well, listen, in all probability, I think he's he's going to land in a backup situation. I didn't know all the red flag st- stuff about his character. So I don't even know, you know, what if he ends up not maturing, how long is he g- even going to be able to hold on in the NFL and, and be a backup that could possibly develop into anything? Because if, if he's a knucklehead and he's not contributing to the team and he's just a backup, like, What's the point of having you around? You yeah, know what I mean? more so like Spencer Gifts, am I right? Like this place is kind of I, mean, weird. I love, I love like all the tweets and stuff like you see during the combine of like uh, Spencer Rattler may have really turned the corner with his like character because he's the first person to say hi to this guy. And, like, <laughs> the, I'm like, dude, save Shut me up. with all that stuff, dude. It's right, so they're trained, they're coached, they're, they're freaking interviewing. Like th- they know eyes are all on them. Like yes. Adunze running that cone drill, like. Right. 15 times like yeah it's cool but dude that's yeah. they're all performing all right, right. they know the camera it's a job on interview. and camera like he was a what are you gonna off do the field. like you know where to go but his hotel room right i mean like <laughs> what are you gonna do when it gets tough he was probably waiting for somebody and right. nobody's watching <laughs> yeah. it's all about when nobody's watching and right. it's which is hard to know what they do because no one's watching <laughs> <So>. <laughs> but it's it, it's it'll It'll really show. Double it'll show sword, when you never uh, turn into anything so right. every everything right. i take every sp- like professional, like thing I take my son to for like his sports that he plays for like coaching or like, listen, man, the most important thing you're going to do are going to be all the things that nobody sees you do. Mm-hmm. He's like, when nobody is watching is how you, you go from being good to being great. He's like, that's the difference. He's like, when nobody's watching, that's the most important time. Like for multiple different people. Like I, I was just yeah. had a meet with an Olympic wrestler. And he true. said the same exact thing. He's like, the most important thing you will do is all the stuff you do when nobody's watching. Yeah. And that that's, applies, how, that's you. Ca- that's how you become a champion. It applies to life. Keeping, yeah. You keeping yourself accountable and, yeah. and pushing yeah. yourself. All right. Well, so do you like Rattler or not, Jared? Um, no. I mean, do I, all right. Is it a binary? Like, do I think he's going to be fantasy football relevant yeah. for us? And that's, dynasty, why, that's why I always mean. No. Not if you want to have him over for call. Probably not. No. Yeah. And that's what I mean. I, anytime I say I like a player or not, it's always for dynasty fantasy football. Nothing else. And I don't care how they feel about what me, about what we say about them. I'm not going to run into them. No. You play, you play the same NFL professional. It's nothing against football. any of these people, people personally. No, I, I know. It's like, never yeah. no. a personal no, thing. It's we have to try to decide. Do we draft this player or do we not draft this player? That's all we really. We're doing about. a podcast in my buddy's basement. All right. <laughs> well, <laughs> somebody's like, "Hey, dude, you don't put G's at the end of your words." I'm like, "Yeah, you're right." Correct. Yeah. So there you go. <laughs> Moving on, Michael Pratt. Watch the tape, Spencer. Quarterback two lane, six two and a half, two hundred seventeen pounds. Sounds familiar. Uh, nine and one quarter inch hands, 30 and three quarter inch arms. He is 22. He'll be 23 in September for this class. That's pretty young. That's not bad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> in the 20 yard shuttle, he ran 4.23 in the three cone. It was 7.20. The broad jump of 114 inches, a vertical of 36 inches. Uh, last year at Tulane in 11 games, he completed 65.4% of his passes, 2,406 yards, 22 touchdowns against five interceptions and 286 rushing yards and an additional five touchdowns. Yeah, I came in with it from Pratt. I was just like, man, this is a guy that <laughs> doesn't really have an NFL quarterback arm. Um, really? he, he, I thought he was okay. Uh, I okay. think I like him a little bit more. Yeah, okay. I, I Di- like him more than Rattler. Okay, different point. Me too. Like, like, not where it's like... He's got more game in him, like... A gamer. I, I don't know, man. Like, I felt like he wouldn't, like, lead his – like, he'd wait till the receiver gets out of his breaks before he actually throws the football instead of throwing the football before he got out of the receiver break. Um, I thought he moved in the pocket pretty nice. I thought that was really good. Um, his accuracy was just – I don't know. Like, again, some of the – like, I want to see these guys be able to throw it outside the hash mark. Right? So, I so this is – I mean, number, obviously – Tulane, not a big school, right? right? I mean, yeah, we didn't even have it in the film room. We had to all go out and kind of find our own film. Guy. Um, but school of champions, school of champions, right? Beat USC uh, last year, by the there, way. I mean, there was so you were talking about his pro- his pocket presence. I was, I think there was times where front side pressure got to him, which I mean, in, in 
course, I mean, that's kind of bad, right? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, when you're a quarterback, you can get blindsided, right. and you know, when you see it coming, guys are coming right up the middle. Bad. I mean, yeah. that 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 hurt that hurts. Those but guys you big. understand it. <laughs> But when you get constantly front side pressure, that means you just really are not aware of what's going on around you and you kind of don't have an eye downfield as well as kind of in your own zone. So you kind of have to be able to do both of those things. So there are some concerns there, but I thought he did a, a relatively nice job when he was, when he hit the drop, you know, he hit his back foot and his drop back, let go of the ball. I thought he was able to thread in some pretty good balls. Mm-hmm. I thought he had nice, nice velocity on it as well. So I think there's enough here that, He's a guy that I could see being a backup somewhere and and getting a shot. A la, um, what's his name last year uh, for the Bengals? Uh, Jake Brown. Jake Browning. That is hilarious that you say that because I was listening to the NFL Stock Exchange podcast and that was the main guy they comped Michael Pratt to was a Jake Browning. Plays a very similar style okay. game. Uh, Just clean. Yes, doesn't make a lot of mistakes. Smart player okay athlete yeah. but nothing like yeah so it's funny you say that because that was the exact play i have not to. listened to that podcast nor do i know about it so that was yeah. an original thought original thought from <laughs> matt o'hara uh no but but I, I i do think and one of the other things that they mentioned on there was he sustained an injury uh in week one and if you look at that game going up to the injury he was almost flawless like perfect then after that injury, he missed a couple games, and they said the rest of the season looked a little different than he did in his junior campaign and that first game of his senior campaign. So I'm curious. I kind of want to go back and watch a couple yeah. games of last year to see, does he look even a little bit better? Because I liked overall what I saw. Nothing to write home about, but in the Jordan Travis type of range, like he's another guy that I would be willing to take a shot on because I think there's enough good – it's some tools so, there to, to so, be able to draft. So in the past, I would have normally poo-pooed just because he's a late round guy and mm-hmm. and almost given it no thought. But I I've, I've been trying to hone my stuff right, mm-hmm. my processes over the years, and just do the fact that a guy like Brock Purdy was like the last guy he picked and right. has been so good is why I I think. Listen, I don't want to over I don't want to overdo it, but Correct. but he, but it's a guy. This is a guy that I've I've probably studied a little bit more than I would normally and kind of seen at least within more of an open eye than I mm-hmm. normally would. And what I saw, I, I liked. I'm with you. Um, no, so I thought it was just okay. Well, maybe you need to br- open those Brock Purdy eyes. <laughs> Take right. a new glasses <laughs> today. <laughs> well, we can, we can all close our eyes to the next one. Jared, yes. do you like him? Yeah, I actually do like Michael Pratt a bit. I, I wanted him to stay in school and transfer to Ohio State, actually. That was like a guy <laughs> I was like – yeah, we'll take him. one of these. Like, then I would have Because uh, Michael Pratt's been a name. I mean, if you play Debbie in college fantasy football, like, his name's been around for a little bit because uh, he had some nice games versus, like, Texas. Started as um, a true freshman. Yeah, and he's been around for a while. So, I, I do. I think he does have some nice tools, and I'm is- interested to see where he does go in the draft because uh, if there's a path for him, then I would consider him late in, like, a super flex league. He- I do, I do like guys that have a lot of snaps, and he's a guy that has a lot of I snaps. I mean, I like him more just because all three of you like him now, just to let you know. Like, I just yeah. – I naturally the like guy him more. you go back and watch some film on. And yeah. He's one of the very last guys I watched, too, and it's kind of like – Yeah. 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 But, nothing, towards in. In. Yeah, but nothing was left me worse – uh, feeling than the very last guy I watched. <laughs> Matthew, right. please. Joe Milton the third, Tennessee quarterback, six foot five, two hundred and thirty five pounds, ten and a quarter inch hands, thirty three and three eighths inch arms. Three. He is twenty three and wait, what's today? What's the day today? The fifth March. So he'll be turning twenty four tomorrow. Tomorrow. Happy <laughs> birthday, I wrote Joe Milton. Yeah. I wrote down here he's twenty four because yeah. it comes out. Show, It'll yeah. be out, by the time it's out. He'll be twenty four. Happy birthday! Uh, We're about March to not 6th. be very nice. He didn't run it. <laughs> he didn't run anything. He did do the broad jump, one hundred twenty one inches, vertical thirty five inches. So he's got some athleticism. That uh-huh. is for sure. Some explosion uh, numbers are very too. good. Yeah, he's, he's he'll kill you with the football. Listen, um, if you take Uncle Rico from, come on, I'm not done with his numbers. Oh. Twelve <laughs> games last year, he completed sixty four point seven percent of his passes, two thousand eight hundred and thirteen yards, twenty touchdowns, five interceptions. 299 yards rushing and an additional seven touchdowns on the ground. Listen, if you took Uncle Rico <laughs> and you actually put him in college out of his high school debut, he's Joe Miller. I it, watched him throw it 70 yards. I'm he, say He's got a hose. He could throw he it over the mountains. It. But honestly, Uncle Rico is probably more accurate because he actually hit Napoleon in the face with that pork chop or that's steak, true. whatever he it did. was. 
<laughs> and <laughs> Joe Milton ain't hitting anybody on anything. It was an incomplete pass, but there's he threw it anywhere. 70 yards. There's no, there's no nuance to his game. There's no. It's either I chuck it 50, 60, 70 yards downfield, or I tuck it and run. Yeah. And that's it. That's, that's, that's this game. That's in a nutshell. Because if he throws the football, it is. I don't understand how it's that <laughs> inaccurate. Like it's just or I, inaccurate. I would see, I like sometimes he would throw the ball, and I'm like, there's like three receivers like somewhere in the area. Like which one was that even going to? <laughs> like that bad. Like literally that bad. Like he'd throw the ball, and you're like, I don't even know who he was throwing the football to. Like in that one instance, like I don't even I don't even know. Like his accuracy. I don't know what his completion percentage was. 64, which is not terrible. Yeah. Tennessee offense is pretty friendly. It's got to be short passes, right? It's a very simple offense. A lot of, they split the field, first read. Like, it's it's a pretty simplistic offense. Not an NFL style offense. uh, He can threaten all parts of the field. He can't. They're all threatening (laughs) just because it might hurt if it hits you. Pro Football Focus has got a stat for you. Let's hear it. Want to hear his completion percentage um, on yards uh, throws after ten yards? What? Sure, thirty-eight percent. Sounds about right. Well, it's because he was either throwing ten yards or seventy. <laughs> good luck. And no in between. And good luck completing. Averages this. out to seventy. <laughs> I will say he'll probably be a guy that does go earlier than you would think. Because think so? of somebody could fix him. Tools. Yeah, yeah. He's, He's a toolsy guy. He's, He's got, got. Listen. He's got all the tools. He's got the build. He's got a cannon for He's an athletic. Absolute yeah. cannon. Like, he shows up to fix your floor. He's got all the saws, <laughs> all the hammers, but he's not wearing any pants, <laughs> any shirt. And you're like, what is going on? Why right? is he's all tools? Is he I mean, he's got all the, he's all <laughs> tools. He's got he's all the tools. YMCA. <laughs> I mean, but I don't think you should come in my house. <laughs> I don't feel safe. So. Is this chipping nails? Yeah. I don't. Like. If he gets drafted, like he's not he's not off my board because for sure if he gets drafted, he has to go into a game. He's gonna they're not gonna let him throw the ball. He's just gonna run the ball. <laughs> so he's just he's gonna give me some points. He said, "Look, I'm either throwing a 70 yard touchdown or I'm running it. Those are the options." Dude, Tyree, go get it. Not, dude, I haven't seen somebody throw a football that bad in a long time. It's, it wasn't yeah. good. It doesn't look great. I where agree. was he before Tennessee? Michigan. 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 I wish you would stay there. Yeah, instead of JJ McCarthy. <laughs> Son of a B, Joe. So that's it. Quarterbacks are done. In the book. We'll discuss again after the NFL draft. Actually, we'll just discuss right before the NFL draft when we do our mock draft, but more in depth after draft. Right after it. We'll be back next week talking. Running backs. Wow, the good stuff. Adios.